Psalm 47. Now, Psalm 47, as, uh, as for Psalm 46, is a psalm of celebration. And it's the second of the trilogy. And this psalm was sung uh, on the Jewish New Year. And it is because of its celebrity mood and so on, uh, it is joyful. And it celebrates the kingship of God. And the title is The Eternal King. And so looking at the three portions, He has conquered all, verse 1 to 4. He ascends the throne, verses 5 to 7. He is exalted as King, verses 8 to 9. So this, projecting into the future, this is also about praise and worship in the Millennial Kingdom when Christ shall rule. So this is also this psalm is actually also known as the Psalm of the Millennium. Millennium Kingdom. Millennium. So to the chief musician, a psalm of the sons of Korah. Verse 1. Oh, clap your hands, all you peoples, shout to the Lord with the voice of triumph. You all know this verse, right? Oh, clap your hands, all you Pentecostal. Is it? Is it referring to only the Pentecostal, the charismatic? No. Everyone. Everyone, okay? Not just for the select few. No. Clap your hands because they have just experienced victory, triumph. God has delivered them. Joy. And this is not, we are not clapping to affirm God, to make Him feel alive. Uh, so this is to liberate us. Some people, you know, it's like giving. We give not because God needs it. No, no, no. It's because we need to give. We get to give. So by clapping and so on is not, Chinese is not Hong Chang. No, it's not to affirm him, to make God look good, feel good and so on, but it is to liberate us. It's joy, you know, when we are happy with something, we want to congratulate, we want to celebrate, we clap. So oh, clap your hands, all you peoples. Shout to God with a voice of triumph. So, it doesn't sound to me like a very quiet worship. You know, out of the abundance of your heart, you know, praise the Lord. You know why? Because in Psalm 22 verse 3, we, we study that He is enthroned in the praises of His people. He is enthroned on the praises of His people. So, lift them up with your praises. For the Lord Most High is awesome. But if you read the King James, the word here is terrible. Yeah. Uh, for the Lord Most High is terrible. That's why I say don't read the new now don't read the King James Version. Uh, if you're England, your old England not so champion, uh, it can really confuse you. Not easy. King's English. So we read the new King James. For the Lord Most High is awesome. He is a great king over all the earth. This is the millennial kingdom now. Not now. Not now. Now he's not king over the whole earth yet. He will subdue, subdue the peoples under us and the nations under our feet as we read just now in Psalm 46 so all the rebellion and all the lawlessness all the unrighteousness they all will be put down the wars will cease the arrows will be broken and so on chariots will be burnt so all this lawlessness rebellion unrighteousness will be put down and the nations under our feet who will be ruling and reigning with Christ in the millennium? Millennium. Who? We. Right? So, and the nations under our feet. He will choose our inheritance for us. He will choose our inheritance for us. But we all like to choose, right? I want this one. I want a Rolex watch again. The Casio one give to my brother. I want the, this uh, the bungalow again. Okay? HDB give to my sister. No, he will choose. Okay. 
some he will give different things from others. So he will choose our inheritance for us. God always gives his spares when the choice is left to him. Because he knows what exactly you need. The excellence of Jacob, whom he loves. You see, Jacob, not transformed yet in the flesh, he still loves. Praise God for that. So what we have here in the first four verses, he has conquered all. He has subdued all. Now, we look at the second part. He ascends the throne. Verses 5 to 7. God has gone up with a shout, the, sh the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Now, because of this verse, some churches, the liturgical churches, liturgical churches, that means liturgy, a lot of, a lot of ceremony, a lot of uh, the... Like for example, they, they, in the Catholic Church, they got liturgy and the Anglican, and so you know they got all, all these uh, procedures and so on. Rituals, yeah, rituals, yeah. Um, so, uh, in 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 the days past, a lot of liturgical churches they sing this psalm on the Ascension Day. Ascension Day, you see, just like we celebrate the birth of Christ, Christmas, right? Yeah. Then we celebrate Easter. He died. Then they also celebrate the ascension, the, the day when Jesus went back up to the Father, to heaven. So they celebrate. So on that day, they will sing this psalm because the verse here, God has gone up with a shout. The Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to God. Sing praises. Now, this if you look back to uh, second, uh, I, where is, which one is this? Mm, I can't remember the reference. But if you look back, when David brought the ark back to Jerusalem, when David brought the ark back to Jerusalem, the people were singing and praising and, and so on. And they brought the ark up. Because whenever you go to Jerusalem, you go up. So that's why the Verse here is, God has gone up with a shout. So, the ark, picture of God, has gone up with a shout. The Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praises to our King. Sing praises. Yeah, this is found in 2 Samuel chapter 6. 2 Samuel chapter 6, you will find the ark that was brought back to Jerusalem. And the people were praising God. 2 Samuel 6 verse 15. Okay, no need to turn there now, but you can go back and, and look at it. Uh, when the ark was brought back, they were singing praises unto the Lord. Verse 7. For God is the King of all the people, of all the earth. Sing praises with understanding. Sing praises with understanding. Means what? thinking about what we sing. But sometimes we just let go. Just say, now, praise God, most songwriters are, are okay. You know, they know God and, and so But I cannot be sure, 100% sure that every songwriter has the same. Yeah. Just like, you know, it's like saying that everyone who, who has written a book has got all the facts, right? No, so, when you sing, don't sing blindly. Sing praises with understanding. So, thinking about what we sing. So, of course, we trust our worship leaders to choose the appropriate songs for our praise and worship unto the Lord Most High. Verse 8. Now, the third part is a simple psalm. He is exalted as king. Verses 8. Night. God reigns over the nations. Of course, this is about the future, it's not yet. God sits on his holy throne. The princes of the people have gathered together. The people of the God of Abraham. So, looking into the future, the princes of the people, that means all the leaders of the people, they come together. And not only the leaders come together, but the people of the God of Abraham, 
they come together. So who are the people of the God of Abraham? Who? You look at Genesis 12 verse 3. Genesis 12 verse 3. Genesis 12 verse 3. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. And in you, who is you? Abraham. God was speaking to Abraham, calling him to come out of the country of earth. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. And for us to stand there on that day, we are blessed. Because the rest will be put down with him. All the rebellion, unrighteousness and all this will be put down. You will be there. So, and you also know, we are also the seeds of Abraham. You study the Bible. So, it is referring, verse 9, the leaders of the people have gathered there and God's children, the people of the God, because in Abraham we are all blessed, the people of the God of Abraham, they are there for the Shields of the earth belong to God. For the shields, you know, shield, when they go to war, they carry the shield. It's a picture of power and authority. And they belong to who? Not to the enemy. They belong to God. And He is greatly exalted. He is greatly exalted. And I think it's, it's, it's uh, timely to just look at this as we end Psalm 47. Philippians chapter 2, verse 9 to 11. Philippians chapter 2. He is greatly exalted. Philippians 2, verse 9. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him, Jesus, and given him the name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of those in heaven and of those in earth, on earth, and of those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. <coughs> and that is Psalm 47.